ArcGIS, you can manage your data um, easily and efficiently. Let's walk through some examples. We're an open system. You can work with data from many different types of formats, from GeoJSON to spreadsheets to other common geospatial data files. On the next release of ArcGIS Online, we're adding a new uh, uh, piece of data that you can work with, and that's photos and files. So if I look here, I've got a folder of a bunch of pictures. These pictures were taken with a device that captured the location information and stored it within the XS informa XIF information in the header. I can add that directly to my organization. So I've got this file here. Notice it's two and a half gigabytes, all zipped up. I'm going to select Photos with Locations and give it a tag and publish it. This is going to publish this information into my organizational account extract that location information and create a feature layer of those points. Now, I'm not going to make us wait here while this finishes, but trust me, it finishes in about a half an hour. Uh, once it's updated, I can see this. Um, I've got this layer here. All 18,000 features were located and added to my uh, feature layer along with those photos. Then I can build an application that allows me to explore that information. So if I touch the feature here, I can see that photo on the right. Now, when you store your photo within uh, ArcGIS, uh, you get some added benefits. So if I can say width equals 300, that's going to automatically reduce the size of that photo for me. Pretty cool. Um, now let's talk about how you can update your data. And for this example, I've got a data set from Iowa Environmental Mesonet. Um, this data set um, has of flood warnings. It's already been published, but I have many different ways I can update this data. So I can overwrite the entire layer, I can update individual attributes, or I can append new data into it. Now, data doesn't always come exactly as you need it. So this data set returns when the warning was issued and when was it expired in string format. But I actually want to take that and convert it into a duration. So let's create a new field of information. And we'll make it a double. And add it. And now we're going to calculate the values. For calculation, you have two different uh, ways to calculate. You can use standard SQL, or you can use the Arcade scripting language. So let's walk through this script. So this was the format of the string, and I can use simple string functions to pull out the year, month, day, and to create my own date. I can do that for both the issued field and the expired field, and then I can compute the duration by using the date diff function and specifying that I want it returned in hours. I'll go ahead and round it to do decimal places, and then ready to go. So now, Arcade is a very powerful and easy to use scripting language. It's modeled after uh, Excel-like capabilities, but it also has geospatial functionality like Lisa showed a few minutes ago. Once this is done um, pushing the data in, we'll see that I now have this field called duration, uh, which is reporting to me the number of hours uh, that this flash flood warning occurred. Now, you can also update your data <coughs> not just by you, but by other people. So I can create a layer like this bike thefts layer uh, that I can control the settings on not only is it available for editing, but who can edit it and what kind of editing is allowed. This is important. This puts you in control over your data. If I look at the fields behind this uh, layer, we'll see we have a set of questions. Um, Things like, was it locked when it was stolen? And what was it locked to? Uh, you are also in control on kind of inputs that are available. So I see for what was it locked to, I have these three inputs. And any application that reads that's going to honor it. 